we shall be speaking also about interval estimation. What is interval estimation? Uh, supposing somebody asked me where you, my listener, are at this moment of listening. I'll say, well, I guess he is at home. But then he insisted, but really I want to make sure where is he? Then I would say, well, maybe he's at home, but more probable that he is somewhere in Poland. Okay, but if the person really strongly insisted to be really nearly 100% sure where you, my listener, are at the moment, I would say, well, I think he is somewhere on this planet. This is about interval estimation. And have a good listening. Okay, as the topic of estimators is quite tricky, let me make a quick review of what we have done so far. First of all, what we mean by estimator. An estimator is a statistics, meaning by this a function defined on random sample, in which the values are to estimate the value of a parameter of a population. Of course, you remember that we cannot measure the whole population, and instead of measuring the whole population, we choose a random sample, we evaluate a certain feature we are interested in, and then we draw conclusions which is extrapolated to the whole population. We already know that if we take a random sample of n elements, then the mean of this sample is a very good estimate of the mean of the population. Now, Second thing, how do we measure the goodness of an estimator? The estimator, first of all, should be consistent, meaning probability that the difference between the value of estimator and the value of parameter, less than epsilon, should be equal to 1 for any epsilon greater than 0. Second thing, a good estimator should be unbiased which means the B sub n, meaning the uh, difference between expected value of the estimator and the value of the parameter, should be equal to zero. If the B n is not zero, we say the estimator is biased, meaning something very negative in statistics. Thirdly, a good estimator should be effective. Telling the truth, uh, the variance of an estimator you can imagine a variance of estimator as kind of chaos in the measure of the population parameter. So the variance of the estimator is never zero. It can be as small as possible, and the number as small as possible is described by Rao Kramer theorem. So whenever um, the estimator is as good as to reach this minimum variance, we call it effective. Next thing is that we were speaking about three different ways of finding estimators. The first is maximum likelihood method. We were producing a likelihood function and then it becomes a function of several variables and we treat it as ordinary several variables real function. So we find partial derivatives and equate them to zero and then we find the sign of the second derivatives produced in a certain way. Second thing is the method of moments. It's a very simple method, assuming that the moments, both in the sample and in the theoretical distribution, should be the same. And we were reviewing the central and ordinary moments here and there, and those in experiment should be equal to those in theory. And that's the basic assumption, and that's very simple. And third method was about quantiles method. The famous quantiles are median and first and third quartile, but a quantile could be of any order. The quantile of order alpha is a number such that the probability that variable x is less than this quantile is equal to order of the quantile. We also already know 
that the mean of the sample is an biased and effective estimator of the mean of the population whenever the distribution is normal and the variance is known. And we also know that the mean of the sample is an biased and effective estimator in Poisson distribution, effective estimator of the parameter lambda. Um, let us uh, make a quick review on the very famous estimators of MRS parameters of the population. The parameters of the greatest interest to every scientist is the mean value, the expected value, which is denoted by mu. And the very famous estimator is the x dash, which is the sum of uh, results of the sample divided by n, the number of elements in the sample. And the properties of this estimator is that it is a consistent and it is unbiased. For which family of distributions is it suitable? Well, it's suitable for any distribution. In particular, we, we check that for Poisson distribution. As for the normal distributions with parameter mu and sigma, it is also effective. But it's not the only way we can estimate mu. We also can estimate mu taking the median, the median of the sample. Now, what are the properties? Then we obtain, um, then we obtain consistent estimator and which is asymptotically unbiased, meaning if n is very big, it is unbiased. Now, for which family? For any family of distributions. And for the normal distribution of the parameters mu and sigma, its effectiveness is about 2 over pi, which is 0 it is about 0 0.64. 0 0.64 is um, a little bit close to 1, but it's not 1. 1 being the best, just effective estimator. Next thing is the variance sigma squared, when the mu is known of the population. Now, how do we estimate the variance? We can take S1 squared as 1 over n and sigma xi minus mu, the mu, known mu, squared. This way we obtain consistent and unbiased estimator. Again, we can use it for any distribution. And we know that for normal distribution with parameter mu and sigma squared, it is also effective. Now, next thing is the variance sigma squared when mu is unknown. Well, in this case, we can take two things. Either we take S squared, which is 1 over n sigma from i equal 1 to n x i minus x dash, x dash is the mean of the sample. So the first one is consistent and asymptotically unbiased, and it is working for any possible distribution. And the second one is sigma squared, uh, let's say sigma squared zero. When uh, The difference between the two is that in the second uh, case we don't divide by n, the sum, but by n minus 1. So we obtain a little bit bigger number. The variance of the population is a little bit bigger usually than the variance of the sample. And this is a consistent and unbiased estimator. And it's useful for any possible distribution. For the distribution of uh, normal with parameters mu sigma, the effectiveness is called n minus 1 over n, so it is asymptotically effective, meaning effective with n is very big. Next, how do we estimate the standard deviation? Uh, we can take s1, s, and s star, meaning just the square root of the previous one, and we obtain just consistent estimation for any possible distribution. Now, if we take BNS or CNS star, then we obtain a consistent and unbiased and asymptotically effective 
estimator. But of course, we have to adjust the constants Bn and Cn to it. And this refers only to normal distribution. We can also take um, the so Rdn, which is maximum minus minimum value times Dn of A, some, some sequence of Dn's. Then this is consistent and unbiased. Okay, now the structure index. The structure index is just k over n. If, for example, if we have the people who like Coca-Cola and we uh, test, say, 10 people and 4 out of them choose Coca-Cola, then the structure index is 4 divided by 10. Well, this is effective and unbiased and only for the Bernoulli trial. We will show that in a moment. We will show its unbiased estimator in a moment. Now, um, the coefficients of variability, which is sigma divided by mu for mu difference in zero, and we take just s over the mean of the sample, and this is consistent and, and refers to any possible distribution.